There are two different calculations one can do with light. Here I have a green laser, its wavelength is 532 nanometers, it's listed directly on the laser. So in light calculations there are three different variables that will come up, wavelength, frequency, and energy. There are two equations that govern these things. So the first is that the speed of light is equivalent to the wavelength of your light times its frequency. Okay, C is the speed of light. Speed of light is constant, doesn't change no matter what, ever. So it's always traveling at the same speed, 300 million meters per second. That's equal to your wavelength, which is going to be measured in meters. And sometimes it'll be in a derivative of meters, so nanometers is very common, you can see over here. Times your frequency, which is measured in seconds to the minus one, which is also sometimes called hertz. So if we know the wavelength or the frequency, we can find the other one through this, through this constant of speed of light. There's a second equation, energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. So energy is measured in joules. Planck's constant is 6.626 or 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And the frequency being seconds to the minus one or hertz will cancel out the seconds there to give us joules. So in a case where we're given some information about particular kinds of light, we can compare how their wavelengths and frequencies will come out. So for example, here we're told that green light is 532 nanometers. So 532 nanometers, to change that into meters, a nanometer is a billionth of a meter. So there are a billion nanometers in one meter. So we can divide 532 by a billion, and that will come out to be 5.32 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. In fact, all of the wavelengths are 10 to the negative seventh meters for all the visible length. So we can use this and plug this into this equation here. So we have c is equal to lambda times nu. We know c is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. The wavelength is 5.32 times 10 to the negative 7 meters times our frequency. So if we want to know what our frequency is, our frequency is going to be equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 5.32 times 10 to the negative 7. Now, if you plug that into a calculator, please put this in parentheses, otherwise you're going to pull your 10 to the negative 7 into the numerator and end up with the wrong answer. Okay, so we go ahead and plug that into a calculator and we get 5.64 times 10 to the 14th hertz. Put those numbers into some idea. 5.32 times 10 to the negative 7th is smaller than the uh, smaller than the width of a piece of hair. So we're looking at half a micrometer. Um, so a little less in thickness than one single hair. So very, very short wavelength. Our frequency is enormous. Our frequency is 560 trillion. And so that's equivalent of saying you're kind of shaking this electron back and forth 500 trillion times per second. And so both of these numbers are kind of getting to that magnitude where it's tough to have a sense of visual like what's going on with that. Now what we can also do is we can take this number here and plug into our second equation, energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. So we can now take this 5.64 times 10 to the 14th hertz and multiply it by Planck's constant, which is of course 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds times 5.64 times 10 to the 14th hertz, and we can get our energy. So it turns out that our energy of green light comes out to be 3.74 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Now, 10 to the negative 19th joules is a very, very small amount. However, this, this particular laser here gives off 5 milliwatts, or a little less than 5 milliwatts. So that's giving off 0 0.005 joules per second. So in terms of how many light waves are leaving this laser per second, it's an extraordinary amount. We're looking at 10 to the negative third versus 10 to the negative 19th. That's a ratio of 10 to the 16th. So we're looking at 10 quadrillion light waves emanating from this laser every second that goes by. Now, what we want to do last is we want to be able to not just do calculations with this, but we want to have an understanding of the comparisons of frequencies and energies. So the longer the wavelength is, 
lowest, the lower the frequency will be. So of all the colors of light, invisible light, red would have the lowest frequency, and then violet would have the highest frequency. And they would gradually get larger from going from one end to the other. In terms of energy, red would have the lowest energy, and violet would have the highest energy. So you can see that in our photoelectric effect demo, or you can look at that in an actual photoelectric effect. And as we progress from red to orange to yellow to green to blue to violet, we're going to go from lower energy states to higher energy states. Our wavelengths are going to go from longer to shorter, and our frequencies are going to go from lower to higher. Okay? So we can go ahead and plug in our numbers here. For green, we now have our frequency of this particular green light is 5.64 times 10 to the 14 hertz. So we know that the frequency of red light is going to be lower than that. And then we know our energy, 3.74 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And so we know that our energy of red light is going to be lower than that, and our violet light is going to be higher in energy and higher in frequency than our green values. Okay. Beyond violet, we would, of course, have ultraviolet. Before red, we would have infrared, then microwave and uh, radio, and then x-ray and gamma after UV.